Hallelujah. The Bible has much to say about prayer. And last night at midnight, or maybe this morning when they first opened their eyes, many, many people made New Year's resolutions. Right. Been there, done that. Amen. A lot of them never, I never saw them through. Amen. Hallelujah. A lot of times people make a resolution to lose weight. Some people make a resolution to get a promotion, you know, to do better at their job, to right. be a better husband, be a better wife, yeah. to attend church more. I think Brother David said he's going to try to be in the house of the Lord more this year than Amen. last year. That's a pretty Amen. good one. Amen. Right. Hallelujah. As a pastor, I love that. I wish all of you would make, <laughs> make that resolution and commitment. Hallelujah. All right. But I want to talk to you about prayer for a few minutes this morning. And the Bible has a whole lot to say about prayer. Amen. As a matter of fact, almost 500 times, not counting words like supplication and petition, just talking about prayer and prayers, the word pray, you'll find in the Bible somewhere around 500 times, maybe a little bit more than that. If you add in all the other words that mean prayer, all right. in the, you know, like intercession, supplication, petition, you're going to find a whole lot more than that. Yeah. As a matter of fact, the psalmist David mentions the word prayer 34 times in the book of Psalms. All right. I believe David knew a little bit about prayer. Amen? Yes. Oh, I believe he knew a little bit about seeking after the heart of God. He's the only man that God ever said was after his heart. Amen? Amen. As far as it's wrote, written down in Scripture, he certainly knew how to repent yes. from experience. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. And most of us this morning probably don't have much trouble figuring out how to ask for forgiveness. Amen. All right. We've had to ask for it so many times, we've probably got it down pat. Amen. Yes. Because we mess up all the time and we're always having to say, Lord, forgive me. Amen. Yes. Or I am. Maybe you don't have to ask for forgiveness as much as I do, but I have to ask a whole lot Amen. for God's forgiveness. Amen. 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 So there's a lot to be said on prayer. As a matter of fact, in the book of Thessalonians, we find the Bible says, pray without ceasing. Yes. Amen. You say, preacher, that's hard to do. Well, it's talking about having an attitude of prayer. Amen. Right. Hallelujah. We find in the book of Ephesians, Paul writing there to the church of, in, in Ephesia, he says that with all prayer and supplication and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. So he talks about prayer there. Yeah. The book of 1 Peter says to watch unto prayer. To be sober and to watch unto prayer. James puts it like this. Confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that ye may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Right. Amen. Come on. Effectual fervent prayer availeth much. In the book of, of uh, Colossians we find it says continue in prayer and watch yes. in the same with thanksgiving. Yeah. A lot to be said about prayer. And this is just a few of them. In the book of Philippians 4 and 6, the Bible says, In everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known yes. unto God. Come on. So you see, the Bible has a lot to say about prayer. Amen. Right. Romans 12 and 12, the last part of that verse says, To be instant in prayer. Yes. To be ready to pray. How many people know what instant taters is? Amen. When I was raised up, Mom, I used to watch her make mashed potatoes, and she'd have to get the potatoes out of the bag, and she'd have to peel the potatoes, and she'd have to, you know, cut them up, boil them, and then smash them, and then add the stuff. Yeah. But instant potatoes, they're done like, I think, maybe two minutes' time, something like that, oh, if that wow. long. To be instant in prayer. Yeah. Amen? You shouldn't have to prepare yourself for prayer. That's right. When somebody says, will you pray for me? You shouldn't have to go on a, on a Sabbath or whatever and some kind of, you know, uh, to, to just get ready to pray. You should be instant right. in prayer. Right. Amen? Come on. Thank God we've got some saints that still know how to pray. Amen? Right. Thank God we've got some people that won't just say, well, I'll pray for you, and then that's all that's ever said about right. it. They never pray for you. Yeah. Amen? Come on. Thank God we've got some people that'll stop what they're doing yeah. And be instant in prayer. Amen? Amen. Every one of us right. should make sure we're that way. Right. When I ask Brother Sleeves to pray for me, I don't mean for him to wait till he goes to bed and says, "Is now I lay me down to sleep. Amen? Right. I mean, I need prayer. if I need prayer right now, I don't want you to wait.
wait till later. I want you to pray for me right now. Amen. Be instant, in season, right. and out of season. Be instant right. in prayer. Come Amen. On. So the Bible has much to say about prayer, so much so that Jesus yes, said in the book of Matthew mm -hmm. that his house would be called a house of prayer. prayer. Amen. Right. He never said a house of the tongue talkers. No. Amen. As important as speaking in tongues is, and I still speak in tongues every day. Amen. All right. Paul said, I speak in tongues more than y'all. I don't know if I speak in tongues more than y'all do, but I speak in tongues a lot. Amen. I still believe in speaking in tongues. Right. I still believe in dancing. I got a little happy in here Tuesday night and did a little jig. Amen. All right. I still believe in worship, but he said his house would be called a house of prayer. And many times during the life of Jesus, his disciples, they might have said amongst themselves, where's the master? Where's Jesus? Oh, he's praying. He's went off into the hills to pray. Amen. Right. So Jesus shows us an example. In the 33 and a half years that he was here on earth, he shows us an example that he prayed. That's right. Amen. Jesus prayed. Guess what, church? You're supposed to pray. Amen. That's right. I ain't talking about these things most churches call prayer meeting anymore. Come on. Amen. Come on. Oh, I've been to some Wednesday prayer meetings. Amen. Yes. I've been to some prayer breakfast. There was a whole lot more breakfast than there was prayer. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. So I ain't talking about now. Now you may go to some prayer meetings. Sister Cindy goes to prayer meeting. Maybe they do good there. I don't know. I've never been there. Amen. Yeah. But I've been to some prayer meetings where there was more like gossip sessions than there were prayer meetings. Amen. Oh. Because they all gathered around and they yacked for an hour and then they said a prayer and went home. That ain't prayer meeting. <laughs> Prayer meetings like what they did on the day of Pentecost, amen? When they all got in one mind and they got in one accord and they began to seek God, amen? I don't want you to go and air my dirty laundry to all of them. I want y'all to get together and pray for me, amen? That's right. That's right. So there's much to be said amen. about prayer. Yes, sir. This morning I want to talk about what to pray when you don't know what to pray. Yes. The Lord dropped this in my spirit this week, and I'm fixing to drop it in your lap. Come on. Go with me to Luke, the 11th chapter. All right. Luke, the 11th chapter, beginning in the first verse, Luke 11 and 1. Luke 11 and 1 says, And it came to pass, as he was praying in a certain place. Oh, here we find Jesus praying. Amen. When he ceased. When he found a break, you know, mm -hmm. they didn't want to disturb him while he was praying. Right. Some people don't care. Amen. <laughs> Amen. That's the truth. Amen. Some people won't shut up long enough for you to pray. Come on. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Somebody said there was two men talking, older gentlemen, and one of them said to the other, and said, me and my wife ain't talked for five years. All right. And he looked at him and said, that's terrible. That's awful. He said, well, I don't want to interrupt her. Amen. Amen. She won't shut up long enough for him to say nothing. That's the way it is a lot of times. Amen. Yeah. So Jesus is praying, and thank God they had respect enough not to bother until he ceased. Amen. And one of his disciples said unto him, Lord, teach us to pray. As John also taught his disciples. Yeah. The Lord has had to teach me. Mm. To pray yes. in certain situations. Now listen, it ain't hard to pray when you're on the mountaintop. Right. Amen. It, they can ask you at a minister's banquet to pray. Mm -hmm. And most preachers, you know, that are high up the ladder don't have any trouble finding something to pray. Long and drawn out and beautiful. Yeah. I ain't talking about those times. I'm talking about those times when you open your mouth and nothing will come out. Oh, maybe you ain't never been there, but I've been there. Amen. Ain't been too long ago. Amen. Amen. This disciple says, Lord, teach us to pray. And what does he say to them? <laughs> when you pray, say, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, as in earth, as in heaven, so in earth. Give us day by day our daily bread. And forgive us our sins. For we also, for we also forgive everyone that is that is indebted to us. And y'all had to forgive me because I picked the scripture I didn't memorize. 
<laughs> Amen. You can find this prayer another place in the Bible, and it ain't exactly in these words, so it's a little harder for me to get through. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins. The other one says, forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Amen. And as we also forgive everyone that is dead unto us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Right. For thine is the kingdom and the glory forever and ever. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. That's how I memorized and prayed it. Amen. That's how I've prayed it before. Yeah. Jesus said the first thing you want to do is our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. So it'd be a good thing to hallow his name. Amen. Right. It'd be a good thing if we learn today that whenever we go to him in prayer, the best thing that I ain't yeah. saying it's wrong to do, but it's a good thing if you get some praise out before you get your wants all laid out on the table. Amen. Right. It wouldn't hurt anything for you to just spend some time with him saying, Lord, I praise you. I thank you. I lift your name up. I exalt you. Many times we find ourselves praying when? Whenever we need something. Amen. But he wants us to pray sometimes, not just when we got to have something, not just when we need something, not just when we feel in need, but He wants us to pray prayers of thanksgiving, prayers of praise. Right. So His disciples ask Him to teach them to pray, and He gives them what many call the Lord's Prayer. Mm. Amen. Right. And He tells them how to pray. Come on. Sometimes, and I know that as preachers, pastors, ministers, whatever label you want to slap on us. Mm. I know that we're not supposed to admit that we're going through something. I know that it's not popular to admit that you're facing a trial or you're walking through the valley. And for sure you're never supposed to admit that you're at a loss for words. All right. When they call you with that question, you're supposed to have an answer. Amen. Amen. Right. But we don't always have the answer. Right. Amen. Come on. What do you rather have? A preacher that tells you, you know, mm -hmm. I don't know, or would you like to have one that makes something up to make itself look smart? The other Amen. Right. Sometimes I tune in over there on one of them Christian channels that's called Ask the Pastor. Mm -hmm. And they got a board of like four or five pastors, and they got a moderator there, and he's reading questions that they got from emails, reading questions that they got from people who wrote in letters, and sometimes mm -hmm. there'll be a caller. <clears throat> and it kind of it, it, it makes me giggle a little bit, maybe it shouldn't, at some of these pastors' answers. Yeah. You know that they don't know a bit more the answer to that question than anything, but they are dancing around that bush the best way they can. Amen? Amen. And by the time they get through, the caller don't know no more than they did before the guy started. Uh, the pastor might look a little smarter, but he didn't give any kind of an answer. Sometimes when you call me for an answer, I'm just simply going to tell you, I don't know. No. <laughs> Amen. I'm not too proud, Brother Sleeves, to tell you I don't know. Right. And sometimes I get asked questions. Where's that at in the Bible? Uh -huh. And I say, that ain't in the Bible. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's in there. I know it is. I've read it. No, no, that's not it. And it makes you wish they hadn't even called you. Right. Amen. Because you can't tell them that it ain't in there. Yeah. Somebody called me a long time back. They said, we're up here at our apartment. We're having discussion with our neighbors. And we're looking for that scripture. That says in the end day, in the end times, you won't be able to tell one season from the other. I said, it ain't in there. I said, Granny told you that. Grandma told you that. Great grandpa told you that, but it ain't in the Word of God. The book of Genesis said, as long as the earth remains. Now, how plain is that? As long as the earth remains, there will be seasons. There will be hot and there will be cold. Amen. You might think just because it's a little unseasonably warm in Kentucky that they, they that that's a sign of the end of time. But go to Dakota for a for a few weeks. Amen. Yeah. Go to North Dakota for a night or two, and you'll find out that global warming ain't quite as bad a problem as old Al Gore thinks it is. Amen. All right. Well, the Bible never says that, and that ain't the only thing. There's a lot of things that we've been taught down through the years that people will call you and say, "Where's that at? Where's that scripture? Where's that at?" And you tell them it ain't in there. And they won't believe you. Amen. Because mama told it to them. Because grandpa told it to them. Because it's been passed down so long yeah. down the chain that everybody thinks it's in the Word of God. Oh. I know there are times that we're not supposed to say, you know, I just don't know. Mm. Right. Amen. But sometimes that's what I have to tell you. Sometimes I have to tell you it ain't in there. <laughs> Amen. That's true. And we for sure, many, many times, <clears throat> preachers being fleshed just like the rest of us don't know what to pray. Right. Amen. Have you ever found yourself in the valley? Maybe you were weighted down with so much grief. Amen. Maybe you felt like that something had knocked the wind out of you. Mm. 
Yes. Anybody better ever been hit in the gut before? Yeah. You get all dizzy. You Amen. can't catch your breath. Uh -huh. First time it happened to me, I thought I was dying. Mm -hmm. Amen. How many times, or maybe have you ever found yourself, because I found myself, and it ain't been that long ago, that I, I came into this church under what I considered a heavy load, probably not compared to yours, and knelt down at the altar and opened my mouth, and Brother Sleece, would nothing come out. Known the Lord since I was five years old, been preaching for 25 years, stood in front of congregations all over, Big congregations, little congregations, preached thousands of messages, came in here, got down to the altar, and wouldn't nothing come out. Opened my mouth and wouldn't nothing come out. I felt like I was under a heaviness, a weight, a burden. It felt like that I just found myself saying, God, I don't, I don't know what to pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Under a weight of grief. And I started saying, Lord, I don't know what to pray. And I found myself telling him this, Brother David. Lord, I lay this situation on this altar before you. This thing that I'm going through, this thing that we're facing, I lay on this altar. My life, I lay on this altar. Everything that I am, everything that I'm not, mm -hmm. I don't know what tomorrow holds. I don't know how this is going to turn out. But I lay it on this altar before you and ask that your will be done, not my will. I don't even know what I want. I don't even know how to pray it. But I lay it before you and ask for your will to be done. Yeah. And it was then that he whispered to me. Yeah. And he said, that's exactly what I wanted to hear you pray when you knelt down at the altar. Hallelujah. Right. Oh, I didn't know what to say. I didn't think I did. I didn't know what to pray. But I found myself at a loss for words. And I began to just lay myself bare before the throne and say, God, help me. I don't understand it. I don't know how to fix it. I lay it before you and ask for your will to be done. And he said, that's it. Amen. That's it. Amen. 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 Oh, I know sometimes we can say long, beautiful prayers. Amen. Especially in front of people. Right. Amen. Come on. Uh, especially in front of people. Amen. But what about when you get to the place where you don't know mm. what to pray? Yeah. Amen. 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 You don't see no way out. Yeah. You don't see things getting any better. Right. And you just say, Lord, I lay it before you. Amen. Go with me to Genesis, the 32nd chapter this morning. When life's trials and things, whatever it is, seems to knock the breath out of you, seems to knock you down. Amen. Not only knock you down, but put its weight on you while you're laying there. Amen. It's another thing to be knocked down. It's another thing for them to stand on you while you're on the ground. Amen. Right. Amen. Let's look this morning at someone we've read about mm -hmm. over and over again. Genesis, the 32nd chapter, the 22nd verse, mm -hmm. talking about Jacob. We find Jacob in this place. He's going back to his brother. Y'all have heard me preach this before. You know why he left? He left because his brother wanted to kill him over the birthright that he sold to him for a bowl of pottage or whatever it was. <laughs> so he runs away and he gets in more trouble with Laban. How many people know you can't run away from your problems? Amen. Amen. <laughs> but at least we got people all the time switching from one church to the other and just can't figure out why they have the same problems because they are the problem. <laughs> Amen. It's because the problem looks at them in the mirror every day to keep blaming somebody else. Amen. They keep, well, I just don't feel loved at that church. You don't feel loved at no church. That will tell us something. Amen. Right. Well, those people are just hypocrites. Yeah, they're hypocrites everywhere you go. That ought to tell you something. I just don't feel like I belong no matter where I go. Well, that ought to tell you something. Right. Amen. We got some things inside of us that need to be fixed. Amen. It's time for us to quit pointing our finger at everybody else. Amen. And decide, hey, maybe the problem, it just maybe, you know, this is just a fleeting thought, but maybe the problem's me. Amen. 
Maybe the problem ain't everybody else. Come on. Maybe the problem's, God forbid, Brother Tyler, but maybe the problem's me. That's right. Amen. Amen. Maybe the problem ain't my preacher that I look at. Maybe it's the, the problem is the one I look at in the mirror. Mm. So we find Jacob running from Laban, heading back to what he considered at the time anyway, enemy territory. His brother said he's going to kill him. He said, wait till daddy dies and I'll kill him. Yeah. Amen. Wait till daddy dies and I'll kill him. Mm. So we find Jacob in a place where I'm talking about today. The Bible says he rose up that night in the 22nd verse of 32nd chapter. And he took his two wives. And that may be part of his problem right there. Amen. Amen. My goodness. And his two women servants. He got too many women. Mm. And his 11 sons. <laughs> and passed over the ford Jabbok. And he took, you may not know what Jabbok means. But before I get done this morning, you'll realize you've been there. All right. And he took them and sent them over the brook and sent over that he had. And verse 24 says, And Jacob was left alone. You ever felt like that before? Amen. Have you ever felt, can I just talk to you this morning? Have you ever felt like, Brother David, you was in a crowded room, but you's all alone? Amen. Amen. That's right. Have you ever felt like you was in a church full of people, but you was, you was just all alone? Amen. Amen. Have you ever felt like didn't nobody love you? Do you ever feel like he's walking the journey alone? Amen. That's the way Jacob felt right here. He felt Amen. alone. He was left alone, and not only was he alone, but he began to wrestle. Amen. That's right. He began to wrestle with the man, the Bible says, with him until the breaking of day. Now, many times mm -hmm. we find ourselves in this position. What a perfect picture that God has given us in His Word of the times whenever we feel like we're in the place of solitude, when we feel like we're walking through the valley, when we feel like we don't know what to pray, and we're wrestling with that. Amen? Right. We find Jacob here wrestling all night long. Mm -hmm. David put it this way. I think he said his couch, he had soaked with tears, and that ain't an exact quote, but that's what he meant. Mm -hmm. Oh, and he had cried throughout the night. Hallelujah. How many times have you laid and cried and you knew that you needed to pray but you didn't know what to pray because when you opened your mouth, the words were not there. Amen. So Jacob wrestles with this man to the breaking of day. and says, When he saw that he prevailed not against him, he touched the hollow of his thigh. And the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint as he wrestled with him. Mm -hmm. Have you ever felt wounded today? Right. Oh, I hope you can hear what I'm saying. I know you've been there. Come on. The air was taken out of your sails. Amen. It feels like you can't put one foot in front of the other no more. Anybody else ever been there before? Can I confess this morning to you that your pastor has been there before? Amen. Yeah. He said, all right, do you think less of me this morning because I told you that it ain't been, it's not just been once, it's been more than once that I've came into this church and I've knelt down to this altar and it seemed like the weight was more than I could handle and I opened my mouth and nothing would come out. Amen. Come on. Oh, my Lord. <laughs> Listen to what we find Jacob saying as he wrestles, as he's wounded, as he's left alone. And he said, let me go. The one he was wrestling with said that for the day breaketh. And he said, this is Jacob, I will not let thee go except thou bless me. Do you hear that? Amen. Jacob could not stand here. And if you read the early part of this chapter, you'll know. Mm -hmm. He could not stand there and say, I'm justified. I'm worthy. I'm worth a blessing. Yeah. I deserve a blessing. Amen. How many Whoa. people in here today think you're worthy? Mm -hmm. Oh, without Jesus, we ain't worthy of nothing but hell. Amen. 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 So Jacob knew that he wasn't worthy. Right. Oh, we don't find no long... He might have prayed some long pretty prayers in his time. Right. But he didn't have no bunch of words this night. As he wrestled, as he was at this place of Jabbok. Amen. The word Jabbok means to empty out. Right. It means to pour out. It means to lay bare. And that's exactly what he's getting ready to do before God. And when he opens his mouth, he don't explain the situation. He don't voice his opinion. He doesn't voice you know, what he thinks should happen, what he thinks is going to happen. He doesn't even pray, Lord, this is what I want to happen. Because sometimes you don't know 
what you want to happen. Amen? Sometimes when you're, you're, you're faced with situations and you think, well, it would be better this way. No, it would be better. No, this here would be. So finally you find that, God, I don't know what's best. Yeah. So I lay it before you and say, nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. Amen. And Jacob, when he opens his mouth, you don't find no long, drawn-out prayer here. Right. The only thing he says is, I won't let you go except you bless me. Except you bless me. Come on. He didn't make any specific request for the blessing. Right. In other words, my what a picture and example of saying, Here I am, Lord. Yeah. Let your will be done in my life. Come on. I have messed things up. Yeah. I know a lot of times in life, the situation that we find ourselves in, mm. you can't pinpoint it as being our fault. Amen. Right. Things happen in situations and different things with different people that cause circumstances to happen in your life. Right. But Jacob stands here and he's like, oh, mm. I'm not justified. This is my fault. He right. felt guilty. Amen. Oh, Brother Billy, he did not. It was his rightful. Yeah, but what did he say when he went to his brother? Asked for his forgiveness. Why? Because he felt guilty. Amen. Yeah. He felt like he had wronged him in some way. Amen. So he says, bless me. He could not stand there feeling good about himself. As a matter of fact, he felt ashamed of what he had done. He was gripped with fear. He was left alone. He knew that what he, had, what he was, and even if he had forgotten, he knew what he was, who he was, and his flesh. Yeah. Even if he had forgotten, God's getting ready, ready to remind him because you know what he says? Yeah. What's your name? What's your name? He wants Jacob to confess that he's flesh, that he cannot redeem the situation. You hear what I said? Amen. He says, what is your name? And with what strength he's got left after wrestling and after having his thigh out of joint, he says, my name is Jacob. You know what the name Jacob means? It means a deceiver. A supplanter. He said, I want you to confess to me that you are flesh and that I am God. When you get to the place where you don't know what to pray, it'd be good if you acknowledge that He's God and you ain't. Amen. That's true. And you say, God, I don't know. Only you know. I don't know what tomorrow holds, but you know because you hold tomorrow. Right. I bow before you and lay myself open. Yeah. There ain't no sense in trying to hide it from God. He knows every crack and every crevice in your closet. Amen. Mm. He knows everything that's going on. Oh, you can put on the dog in front of me. Amen. Yeah. You make me think that you're a holy Joe, but when you and God, hallelujah, get a little Jesus time, amen, have a little come to Jesus come meeting, on. you ain't going to hide nothing under the bed from Him. Amen. You might be able to take your magazines and hide them under your mattress from the preacher. Amen. But you can't hide them from God. God knows exactly what's going on in your life, what you're doing, and what you ain't doing. So we better, when we get to this place, when it feels like we're the place of Jacob, when it feels like we're the place where we can't, yeah. we can't go on any further, and we don't know what to pray, and we open our mouth and nothing comes out. Yes. We just lay ourselves before the Lord. Yeah. And say, God, I don't know. You know, it ain't a bad thing to confess to God. You don't know. Amen. Right. Only you know, Lord. Amen. I'm not worthy. And he says, What's your name? That's almost like rubbing salt in a wound. Yeah. Who are you? I'm Jacob. Oh my goodness, but here comes the change. Amen. He said, Thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. Right. For as a prince hast thou power with God and with men and has prevailed. Amen. So we find him at this place of Jabbok. Where he poured himself out before God. And after this experience, he renames the place to Penal, yeah. which means face of God. Right. The place where God's headship was revealed to him. The place where he asked for God's will yeah. to be done. Come on. Oh, God, help us. Help us to get to the place to where we pray like Jesus did when he fell in the garden, nevertheless. Not my will, but thy will be done. So what do you pray when you feel like you're alone, nobody else cares? What do you pray when you open your mouth 
and nothing comes out. Come on. Nevertheless, Father, not my will, but thy will be done. Amen. During the valley time, during the time where you can't put your finger on an answer. Yeah. Did you know most of our problems we try to redeem ourselves? We turn to God once we're out of all other options. Oh, That's exactly right. Amen. We try to fix it. Right. We make a bigger mess than what it was to start with. Right. Maybe you can relate to something I've said this morning. Amen. Amen. Yeah. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Not my will, but thy Praise will be done. That's what Jesus prayed in Luke, the 22nd chapter. Mm -hmm. When he went to the Garden of Gethsemane, mm -hmm. and the Bible says when he was in that place, he told his disciples, pray that you not enter into temptation. And when he went and he prayed in the garden, he said, Father, if thou be willing, remove the cup from this cup from before me. But nevertheless, he said, not my will, but thine be done. Be done. That's what you pray when you don't know what to pray. Amen. A lot of times we know specifically, Lord, I want this to happen. Mm -hmm. Lord, I believe this is your will. Sometimes you just don't know what his will is. That's right. Sometimes you just don't know what to pray. Sometimes you just don't know, don't have any fancy pretty words. Mm. Amen. As I close this morning, I want to share with you a few words from a great song that was written by Ira Stanfield. The story behind the hymn is that during this period in his life when he wrote this particular song, according to his friends, his wife had grown tired of his ministry and walked away from him to seek a, her own career in entertainment. Not long after that, she was killed in a car crash. Mm. And the lyrics that he wrote convey the emotions of what I'm talking about today. When you get to the place to where it's so difficult and it feels like you just can't go on and you don't know what to pray, these are the words that he penned. Listen to this. I don't know about tomorrow. I just live from day to day. I don't borrow from its sunshine, for its skies may turn to gray. I don't worry over the future, for I know uh, what Jesus said. And today I'll walk beside Him, for He knows what is ahead. Many things about tomorrow I don't seem to understand, but I know who holds tomorrow, and I know who holds my hand. Praise the Lord. Amen. Glory. Oh, I can't think of a better thing. Come on, Brother Tyler, to do what Praise I told you to do Lord. earlier. I can't think of a better thing this morning for us to do than to lay our lives before the Lord this morning yeah. and say, Lord, throughout this year, let your will, yes. not my will. We have no idea what this year oh, holds. Yes. Amen. Come on. We have no idea Come what the on, next man. hour, the next minute. That's That's right. Right, brother. Let's pray. As this song plays this morning. About oh God. Lord, just lay ourselves before you today, God. Oh God. Hallelujah. I don't believe.